Hey everybody, welcome to a SimGamer TV launch tutorial. Uh, this is for Kerbal Space Program and we are sitting on the pad with a stock Kerbal X in sandbox mode. Jebediah Kerbin is in, in uh, command of the, uh, of the pilot seat and he will be helping us get to orbit. So I wanted to give you a quick tutorial on just how to do that as of release. T turns the SAS module on. That helps Jebediah keep the fly rocket flying straight and true for just a moment. So we'll go ahead and tap the space bar once and once again um, to get this rocket going. Press the Z key to get to full throttle. Tap the space bar once and once again for staging. Now, almost immediately, you want to tap the D key a few times to push the rocket over to about 10 degrees above the horizon or 10 degrees off of vertical. Tap the space bar to stage off these extra stages. Now this is the critical part. I'm going to tap the T key to turn off SAS. What we have started right now when we tipped our rocket over to 10 degrees off of vertical is what's called a gravity turn. Basically, gravity, uh, in addition to aerodynamic forces, let me just throttle back here so we don't get going too fast. Gravity in addition to aerodynamic forces, will automatically tip this rocket over. You can see it's starting to list over, and that's what you want. You want horizontal velocity. But if you try to throw in a lot of manual, um, manual maneuvers and stuff like that to make this rocket do that, <clears throat> you'll have a really hard time. Um, or if you try to go vertical and then push over at 45 degrees at some predetermined altitude, you will end up pulling your hair out in frustration. I am, once I've got that initial push done, I have kept my hands off of the WASD key controls and I'm letting, literally letting gravity turn do all of the work. The only thing I'm controlling right now is the throttle. And I'm using the throttle to make sure I'm at the right speed and uh, altitude for the degree of pitch that I'm at. So we're coming up on 30 kilometers and this pitch is looking good. We want to keep ourselves a little bit shallow. Now that we're out of the thickest part of the atmosphere, we can sort of push more horizontal. We'll just keep on pushing this up to 72 kilometers. Bingo. That's that. We're now high enough where our, our velocity losses for climbing will be very low. So now that we're coasting, we tap the T key again, turn on prograde if your pilot has it available, and uh, just sort of keep facing the direction that our rocket is actually going. So um, if you've unlocked the maneuver node, you can add one here to do a circularization burn. If you're in career mode and you're playing with one of your homemade rockets and you haven't unlocked this node yet, that's no big deal. Usually, your typical rocket design will take between 30 and 40 seconds to finish this circularization burn, depending on how um, how spread out it already is. So this particular one is 40 seconds, <clears throat> which means we're going to go ahead and get ourselves facing the right direction right now. Just like that. Our pilot is able to take over and face the right direction. Now, <clears throat> since we have a planned burn, <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, since we have a planned burn and it takes 40 seconds, um, we actually want to plan this burn so that half of it begins before that point in space that we've marked and the other half completes afterwards. So, take your estimated burn time, which is 40, divide it by 2, and at node T minus 20, which is 40 divided by 2, we go full throttle in this case. And we're going to turn this to stability assist. We don't need to worry about having, I mean, we're facing the right direction. It's a linear burn. It's a straight line. So we just need to make sure and keep facing that way and uh, have Jeb sort of point the nose of the rocket where it needs to go. This little guy is going to count down the meters per second that we need to change our orbit to reach a circular one. We'll go to map and sort of just do this sort of thing. Okay. 71 by 78 is a pretty good uh, pretty good orbit. We can do some other maneuvers and stuff to trim that up a little bit more, but we don't need to worry about right, that right now. That gives you a quick show of how to do a gravity turn with one of the stock rockets in Kerbal Space Program in order to receive, uh, 
in order to reach orbit. If you wanted to, with this particular rocket in this configuration, you could continue all the way on to a moon landing and return, complete with re-entry and everything. Um, and your crew would survive in this capsule, assuming you re-entered correctly. But <clears throat> we're going to go on to part two of the tutorial, which uh, some of you might be experiencing as you work through a career mode, building a rocket that is capable of reaching orbit and how to pilot it to get there. So hang tight for that. So here we are building a new rocket for career mode. I am going to filter by tech level. We're going to use no higher than tech three parts. Um, start off with our command pod and a parachute on top. Let's go ahead and bring this down here and zoom in so we can look at it. Okay. Now, in Tech 2, we have a decoupler. In Tech 3, we have some T200 fuel tanks. We'll stick five of these guys on here. Three, four, five. In your career mode, you may or may not have the swivel engine available. I'm going to use the swivel engine. Um, actually, no, I'm not. I've changed my mind. This one's lighter. I'm not going to use the swivel engine. This one gives more thrust, and the engine's also lighter, which actually means it's going to be a little bit easier to reach orbit. Um, one important thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to go into Tier 3. We need some aviator winglets to actually make this work. So I'm putting these winglets down here at the bottom of the rocket. You can see that the winglets are far below. If I turn on the center of lift, the center of lift is far behind the center of mass. So that's really uh, an important key to being able to do a successful automated gravity turn like that, is that you have to have fins back here that help you or help gravity, help work with gravity to allow the, the rocket ship to naturally tip itself over with the forces that are involved. So we'll turn off those indicators. We are going to use some tricouple computer science here and stick on three of the hammer solid rocket fuel boosters. And then under aerodynamic, we might have some aerodynamic nose cones that make this thing a little bit better. Now, the other trick that I'm going to do here is I'm going to limit the hammer to about 50% thrust. So I've turned down the thrust of the hammer. That means they're gonna burn a little longer. They're gonna apply a little bit less thrust initially. And the reason for that is because I don't want to be going too fast. Uh, I don't want to gain too much velocity too quickly. Otherwise, my, um, my craft becomes much harder to control. And it's much harder to manage that gravity turn. And you'll see what I mean in a bit. So, with this rocket put together, we're ready to aim for orbit. So here we are with this rocket ship we just built together. And I've put Valentina Kerman in command. Once again, we're going to follow the same routine. SAS on, but only long enough to begin the, to help us begin this gravity turn. So, space bar to kick on the main rockets. Push ourselves over to about 10 degrees above the horizon. SAS off, and we will let gravity do the rest of the work for us. So our rocket might turn and pitch a little bit from aerodynamic forces, causing us to vortex a bit. But that's okay. Um, at this point in career mode, you're really just kind of probably trying to reach orbit and do some science about some various inclinations. Those things are gone, and the main engine goes, and here we are racing off at 50% throttle towards our height. So we're at 60 degrees, 8,000 meters. I kind of want to... Um, actually, this is pretty good. 10 kilometers, 55 degrees above horizon. So once again, my hands are not on any of the controls to, to uh, determine which way the rocket is facing. I am just letting the gravity turn do its job. Now we're at 45 degrees, we can really start hoofing it into orbit. 700, 750 meters per second. And again, this APWAPS, this is being pushed out in a nice, you know, somewhat shallow trajectory. We're gaining altitude quickly. Our apoapsis is gaining altitude quickly. We're going to push this to 72 kilometers, 71, 2, I guess just shy of 73. And from here on out, 
we're going to face prograde and let atmospheric actually we don't even need to have SAS on we're gonna we're gonna let atmospheric drag do its job at this point as we just coast up here towards the apoapsis in your career mode you might not have unlocked the um, you might not have earned enough money yet to unlock you need to unlock both mission control and uh, the tracking station to be able to do maneuver nodes like this but if you're flying a similar rocket just keep this information in mind. You want to point at the horizon at about um, T. Do that. You want to point at the horizon with an estimated burn of about 26 seconds. So that means uh, about 15 seconds before reaching the apoapsis. Go ahead and begin your burn. We have maneuver nodes here because I'm in sandbox mode or uh, or uh, in my career mode that I've actually already recorded. Um, by the time I reached orbit, I had maneuver nodes unlocked. Um, by the time I reached orbit for the first time, I had maneuver nodes unlocked. So once again, <clears throat> we've let the gravity turn do its job for really nice, efficient launch profile. We kept our craft nice and light without a whole lot of extra stuff, so it was easier to get into orbit. And at about T minus... Um, 18 actually I will kick on I'm going to throttle back turns out I've done this a little early but that's okay so you can see our fuel being consumed here we have about 30 seconds worth of fuel left and only 10 seconds worth of burn left Now I'm using more throttle to uh, get this burn done a little quicker. And there we have it. Let's see how we did. A 75 by 71 orbit, uh, 75 kilometers by 71 kilometers. Once again, we could do a couple of fine tuning type maneuvers to really circularize that if we wanted to. But <clears throat> here we have it, a tier three rocket with Valentina Kerman successfully reaching space using the techniques of the gravity turn. Here's how gravity turns work. It's all about torque. The gravity has basically, uh, is gonna be kind of pulling, think of it this way. The rocket's facing a little bit off of horizon and the gravity is pulling down on the entire rocket. Well, the big fat finny part of the rocket has more resistance, uh, more air resistance than the sharp pointy to, uh, point at top. So as gravity pulls down and sort of counteracts some of that going through the atmosphere, the air resistance helps push the rocket over by resisting those fins and gravity has basically has more effect on the nose than it does on the tail. Or that is to say, air resistance has more effect on the tail than gravity has on the nose. So it slowly pitches over. And that's the essence of a gravity turn. I hope you find this tutorial useful for all of your large and small rocket launches. Fins and a gravity turn make a huge deal on how easy it is to reach orbit. You don't need to fly the rocket so much as just make sure you have the, your settings and your throttle at the right spot for the right type of ascent profile. I'm Abraham. This is Kerbal Space Program. This has been a tutorial. Until next time, while it is rocket science, it's not that hard. Goodbye!